Today has been exactly 30 days since I implemented all of these new things into my life. I've lost 7.2 pounds in 30 days and I feel flippin' fantastic. Yay, me! So today's video is all about those lifestyle and eating changes that I told you I was gonna implement. Three simple yet significant changes. Drink the water, less than 50 net carbs, and eat in an eight hour window. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you what lifestyle changes I've implemented, what eating changes I've implemented, how I feel, my results, have I lost any weight, do I look different? Do I feel different? I'm gonna show you pictures of myself along the way and I'm gonna show you the scale. I'm gonna share with you what I'm eating, some of my new favorite foods and what we're having for dinner and things that I actually still do indulge in. I'm gonna tell you how I feel, which to me is the most important thing. I'm also gonna share with you some other YouTube channels that gave me some great recipes, some great food ideas, some inspiration, some motivation. I'm also gonna share with you the YouTube channel that just sparked this whole lifestyle change for me. So if you wanna know all about my new lifestyle changes, this is the video for you. Stick around. So I first want to apologize for my sweaty appearance. I just got back from my walk. I'm drinking my water and I thought this was the perfect time to film this video because today it has been exactly 30 days since I implemented intermittent fasting on a 16 to 8 ratio and a low carb diet. And I, I didn't say no carb. I didn't say keto. I said low carb. So let me explain. I'm 51 years old. And since I turned about 48, 48-ish, I started gaining weight. And by the time I was 50 years old, I had gained 15 pounds. And it was all in my middle section. I could look down and I had this belly. But I could see the weight like under my arms and I was getting a roll of, you know, back fat and on my booty. I could see the weight, but it was mainly accumulating in my belly area. I felt bad about myself. Every morning, the first thought that came into my head was, oh my gosh, I've got this belly. Every time I passed by a mirror, I instantly looked at my stomach area. It was just, it was bothering me. I didn't like it, but I couldn't figure out what to do about it. That was the thing. But one day, I was just casually scrolling through YouTube, and this video popped up on my YouTube feed, Dr. Mindy Pales, and she was talking about intermittent fasting, and everything she said to me just made perfect sense. It perfectly clicked. When she talked about eating high numbers of carbohydrates, if you're a woman, if you're in perimenopause or menopause, and she talked about intermittent fasting and how all of these different things combined together, it just clicked for me, you all. It just clicked. And I told my husband, you know what? I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try to make some lifestyle changes. I'm getting older. Obviously, this belly, it has been here for three years. I have not been able to get rid of it. Something's got to give, right? Something has to change, and I'm willing to change my lifestyle so that I feel good and I look good for the long haul, not short term. Every day, I make sure that I drink 64 ounces of water. The next thing is intermittent fasting. I am now eating in an eight hour window of the day. So my window is like 10.30 in the morning to 6.30 in the evening, that's eight hours. And once 6.30 hits, I do not eat a single thing until 10.30 the next morning, nothing. I consume zero calories. And then the third thing I'm doing is counting net carbs. My goal every day is to consume less than 50 net carbs in my eight hour eating window. And normally I only consume between 30 and 40. Yeah, there are some days I do have 50. There are some days I might have 25, but typically I'm in the 30 to 40 net carb range. And those are the three changes. Three simple yet significant changes. Drink the water, less than 50 net carbs, and eat in an eight hour window. I have been on this eating and lifestyle plan for exactly 30 days. The day that I started, I got on the scale and I weighed 147.8. And today, I weigh 140.6. So I have lost 7.2 pounds in 30 
days. After I'd been on this for one week, I lost four pounds. Like I, I could not believe it. I felt great. I was looking good. I could look down and see that my belly was getting smaller and the scale was four pounds down. Week two and week three, the progress slowed down. It went at a snail's pace. I felt the difference. I could look down and see myself getting smaller and my belly definitely was getting smaller, but the scale really didn't change. At the beginning of week four, when I got on the scale, I had lost like another pound and something. So I saw some progress and it gave me some motivation, but really the progress was in the way that I looked. And then when I got on the scale today, which was exactly 30 days that I had been on my new lifestyle uh, eating plan, the scale said 140.6. Y'all, I jumped up and down. Literally jumped up and down. I took a video, I sent it to my husband because I've lost 7.2 pounds in 30 days and I feel flipping fantastic. And it's not even so much what the scale says, it is the way that I feel. I feel feel good and my stomach has gotten so small. I want to show you all these shorts that I have on. The shorts are almost too big. I need to go down a size in shorts. Yay me! I feel great. I feel fantastic. I'm not hungry. I have so much energy and you all know that I'm always full of energy and excited, but I feel full of energy. Literally, energy is bursting out of my ears. I feel good, I feel like I look better. When I walk by a mirror, I don't see my belly sticking out anymore. And that is what is so exciting. I can feel my clothes getting bigger. I can feel my belly shrinking. I can look right here and see that little fat roll getting smaller. I see progress. These are lifestyle changes that I'm gonna keep. This is not gonna be short term. This is a lifestyle and it's so easy to follow and implement, and I feel good, so my body wants to continue to do it, and I will. So if you noticed, I said I am counting net carbs, not carbs, I'm counting net carbs, and let me explain to you what that is and how to calculate net carbs. If you look at the nutrition label on anything that you eat, you will see that it gives you total carbohydrates, but right below it, it breaks down dietary fiber. So to get your net carbs, you take total carbohydrates minus dietary fiber, and that gives you net carbs. So it's 10, 15 in the morning. I've had my walk. I'm back. I'm drinking my water, and it is time for me to have breakfast. I am getting a little bit hungry. So I'm going to show you my new favorite go-to breakfast, and I love it. So let's have some breakfast together. Ratio Keto Yogurt. This serving of yogurt has two net carbs in it, and it is, it's a lot of yogurt. I'm loving the strawberry flavor, the coconut flavor, and the vanilla. I don't eat it out of the little tubby like this. I'm gonna fancy it up, and oh my goodness, it is so good. So I'm gonna top my yogurt with berries. I've cut out bananas. Bananas have so many carbs in them. Who knew? But I love berries, so I do blackberries and raspberries. And then I'm gonna top it with unsweetened organic coconut flakes. Ratio Keto makes granola. This is the coconut almond. They, they have another flavor, can't remember what it is. Or just good old pecans. I like to add some crunch into my yogurt, some texture. So this is my breakfast every single morning, and this is five net carbs, five. So it's now 10.35 and I'm within my eating window. I'm gonna be full. I'm not gonna wanna eat again until lunchtime. Are you jealous of my breakfast? So when you decide to eat low carb and you start paying attention to foods that have a lot of carbs, basically in a nutshell, you're cutting out pastas, rice, chips, crackers, anything that is crispy and comes in a box or a bag, and sadly, chocolate, chocolate and sweets. And those were things that I used to eat every single day and eat lots of. I couldn't wrap my, my head around giving up the foods that I loved. So I had to find ways to eat the things that I enjoyed 
and modify those foods so that I still felt satisfied, I enjoyed what I was eating, I discovered a lady on YouTube with a channel called Little Piece of Heart, and I'll link it in the description box below. But she does low carb and she talks about recipes and motivation and inspiration and I really was watching one of her videos and saw her do this and it looked so good. So I tried it and this is my go-to for pasta. If I'm going to have a pasta with red sauce like a chicken parmesan or meatballs, I, instead of pasta, I do a bed of ricotta cheese that I have mixed in garlic and basil and Parmesan cheese and I put that in the bottom of the bowl and then I put my chicken or my meatballs and my marinara and my other cheeses on top of that and I have it with a side salad, a Caesar salad or a salad with Italian dressing and just a few croutons. So I'm getting the crunch in my salad, I'm not having my pasta and it is a low carb meal. You are also giving up rice, but this is what I do. Cauliflower rice, it is unflavored, it is unseasoned, and it's frozen. I found this is the best one, but just hear me out. No way am I just gonna just heat this up and eat it. That's, it's not good. What you have to do is put this in the microwave for half the time of what the directions say. Then put it in a skillet to finish heating it, but you have to season it. So we will do a roasted salmon sushi bowl, and this is our rice. I season this with soy sauce, ginger, garlic, put it in the bottom of the bowl with my roasted salmon and cucumber and sesame seeds, seaweed chips and green onions. You can grate a little bit of carrot in this when you're heating it up as well and make a sauce, a drizzle that is nothing more than mayonnaise and sriracha. It is so good. We're having that tonight. In fact, the next thing you gotta cut out chips. You do. You can't have chips. Chips of any kind. Cheetos, Fritos, uh, Doritos, regular chips, tortilla chips. They gotta go. They just do. And I'm sorry, there really is not a substitute for chips. At night when my husband comes home and we are dying for a cocktail because we still do cocktail hour and we just want a little something crunchy to nibble on while we're enjoying our cocktail together before we cook dinner, we started eating pork rinds. Y'all, never in my life have I had a pork rind. I thought this was gonna freak me out, eating pork rinds. They're so good, they really are good. This brand is available at our grocery store. It comes in so many flavors. The salt and pepper is really good. This Nashville hot style, it's not spicy. I don't like spicy food. This one just has a little bit of flavor to it, gives you a little bit of crunch. We will do this with guacamole instead of tortilla chips. We eat the fire out of some tacos at our house. Mission Carb Balance Taco Shell. This tastes exactly like the Mission regular tortilla shell. I cannot taste a difference. Three net carbs in one taco shell. So this is a fantastic way to eat a taco. Randy likes spicy, so he ordered these Mr. Tortilla one carb taco shells from Amazon and they are spicy. The spicy three chili, but there's one net carb per shell. They're a little bit smaller. They're more like a street taco. So when we do tacos around here, he does a spicy shell. I do a regular carb balance shell all as well. Something else I've discovered that I love. It's over in your cheese aisle. It looks like a taco shell, but it's made of cheese. They have like cheddar cheese, Swiss cheese, provolone cheese, and it's the size of a taco shell. And so you put this cheese circle in your oven and melt it, lay it inside of your taco shell so you have like a double decker taco shell and then put all your filling and fixing in there. And I absolutely love it because cheese is low carb. Dairy products are low carb, so you can have cheese. So that is my favorite way to actually have a taco. Pizza, I am a pizza fanatic, a pizza freak. The crust, pizza crust, has a ton of carbs. So what am I doing? I make pizza at home using lavash bread. This is just found in your, your bread aisle at your grocery store. And what happens to lavash bread when you put it on a baking sheet and bake it? It basically turns into a cracker, a cracker crust that you make your pizza on. And I am a thin crust, cracker crust 
pizza person anyway, so this is ideal for me. I make myself a pizza with pepperoni, leftover meatballs, ground beef, veggies, marinara sauce, my mozzarella, and I put a little cheddar cheese on it, and this is a fantastic lunch or dinner for normally under 10 net carbs. What are you gonna do about chocolate? Chocolate is hard. Skinny dipped almonds and cashews. These are fantastic. They are covered in a thin layer of chocolate. They're dipped in a cocoa powder. So they look like this and they're just excellent. So, so good. And I also went online and made an order from a company called Chalk Zero. They have a hazelnut spread that tastes exactly like Nutella. This is so good. So I will make a piece of toast, put my hazelnut spread on there, cut up a strawberry. It's an excellent breakfast or an excellent mid-afternoon snack. I also bought some of Chalk Zero's chocolate chips and these are great too. And guess what I did last night? I made a batch of chocolate chip cookies last night because my husband and I had a little something we needed to celebrate and I wanted to do it with cookies. They were fantastic. I had two, yeah, I had two cookies and I don't feel bad about it. And I was still under my daily goal of net carbs. Bread, what are you gonna do about bread? Bread has a ton of carbs. Anything with grains has a ton of carbs. So I went to my grocery store, I'm looking in the bread aisle, there's all these keto breads. I bought some, they were horrible. I couldn't eat them. And when I was watching a video by Little Piece of Heart, again, her YouTube channel, she mentioned this bread by a company called Royo. Unless you live in New York, you're not gonna find this at your grocery store. You gotta order it, you get it shipped to you. So I decided to do it. I ordered two loaves of bread, but this bread tastes like regular bread. It tastes like the bread that I wanna buy at the grocery store, and it's only two net carbs per slice. We also have bought their bagels, and their bagels are huge, but they're fantastic. It is worth the expense to be able to have a good bread. And I just got an email from Royo Bread the other day that they now have hamburger buns. Like with sesame seeds on top, they do have hamburger buns. What about my cocktail? Yes, Randy and I still have cocktail hour. I am not giving up my cocktail hour. We used to drink old fashions all the time, which had simple syrup in it. That has a lot of carbs. So nowadays we're just drinking straight bourbon. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We drink straight bourbon. Last night, I said we were celebrating. We did make ourselves an old fashioned. But my point is, we do still indulge every now and then. It's not every day. We still have the things that we love. I do still eat ice cream because you all know I own an ice cream shop. If I want ice cream, I'm gonna have ice cream. I have a little bitty one and I feel satisfied and I move on. So I'm not depriving myself <laughs> at all. I don't feel deprived. I don't feel hungry. I actually feel really, really good. So let me know in the comments, do you wanna see more videos about what I'm eating? Share some of my recipes, share that secret and how you come up with that golden brown crispy crust to put on your chicken parmesan. I would love to share it with you, but I wanna hear from you in the comments. And give this video a thumbs up while you're at it. What I've discovered about these lifestyle changes are several things. Intermittent fasting, my body is really enjoying having this huge window of 16 hours where I'm not putting food in it. I'm not bloated anymore, I don't feel bleh. This 16 hour window of fasting just makes my body feel good. As far as the low carb diet, I have found workarounds for things that I thought I would miss that I no longer miss. And the fact that I can still eat my favorite things, cheese, mayonnaise, dairy products, salads, salad dressings, condiments, bread. I found the fix for pasta. I can still bread and saute my chicken with that one secret ingredient that I haven't told you about. I really don't feel deprived at all. I can eat all of the things that I love. Sour cream, y'all, I can have sour cream. You can have the sauces on all the things and you can have the pasta sauces, the tomato sauces and the cream sauces. And that is what I love about this low net carb eating is I can have the things that fancy up the food that make me happy, that make my taste buds happy, and that make me not feel deprived. So how did I implement these changes? Willpower. 
I'm not going to lie. The first two days were tough. That mo first morning that I woke up and I would normally have a huge bowl of oatmeal filled with berries and bananas at 8 o'clock in the morning, that was a tough one. I told myself, I can't eat until 1030. I am not going to eat anything until 1030. And I thought I was going to starve to death. Day one was tough. No creamer in my coffee, no honey, no half and half. And if you all have been on my channel, you know me. I love my morning coffee with honey in it. And this was something I thought it was going to be so hard to give up was my morning coffee with my honey and half and half. But I decided for 30 days I was going to give it up. I just cold turkey went to black coffee. So when I had to, on day one, not have a huge boost of carbs, which caused my blood sugar to go up, and I couldn't eat until 1030, and I couldn't have my coffee with my honey in it, I was grumpy, and I got a headache. The first two days, I was. I was, I was a little sassy, and I did have a headache. But by day three, my body started to like level out, and, and it actually was enjoying the changes. I physically felt a change in myself and the way that I felt and the way that my stomach felt, oddly enough, on day three. And it was a good feeling. So once I kind of wrapped my head around the changes and accepted the fact that I'm doing this for 30 days, my body just kind of fell into a rhythm. And honestly, it has been so easy to stick to this plan. The toughest part to me has been cutting off my eating window at 6 30 in the evening and it's not because i'm hungry or i want to eat later it's just because my husband works i'm busy for him to get home from work for us to try to cook and eat and be done by 6 30 just because of the timing of our lifestyle that puts us in like a little bit of a rush but we're doing it we're done by 6.30. Now, occasionally, it's like last night, honestly, it was 7 o'clock. Randy looked at the clock and he said, 7 o'clock, we're done. We just ran behind. He got home late and it happened. So we don't freak out about it. We just try to stay in our eating window. But that honestly has been the toughest part of it. But for now, this gal who's down 7.2 pounds and feels fantastic. We'll see you later.